I don't know what it was. He's walking upright like a man. Sightings in and around Vermont. Bigfoot sightings across New England have been reported. Red glowing eyes, about seven feet tall. Red eyes, big old fangs, claws coming out through. Three inches long, you know, just sharp as they can be. There has been another UFO sighting flying over the Royal Botanic Gardens. There are 500 UFO sightings in the world every month. The truth is out there. Taquitos were basically sriracha delivery tubes for me. They're so good with sriracha. They're delicious. Like, if, if listeners, if you haven't had taquitos and sriracha, you're missing out. <laughs> you're really missing out. It's delicious. Yeah. <laughs> you just you just take the sriracha, you put it at the tip of the tube of the the taquito, to squirt yeah. as much as much sriracha just fill as it up. Yeah, just fill yeah. it. And then and then you get like a sriracha bomb. Yeah. It's very good. <laughs> I want taquitos now. Dude, I think everyone always wants taquitos. It's just a good food. Oh, there's a uh there's a Mexican restaurant in Poughkeepsie. It's called Margaritas. What do they sell? It's very Oh, well, they sell Mexican food, but they also have margaritas. Okay. Um I, I don't I don't drink, so I don't know how they are. So you know. Uh but they have a chili Colorado. Okay. It's a very good like steak dish with like a red yeah. sauce and they serve it with uh rice refried beans and like a little salad type thing like a, yeah like a, but they also come with unlimited chips okay and the chips are really good and if you ask for like the you can ask for like the the green salsa and it's like yeah. super spicy <laughs> it's very good i like the green salsa it's the jalapeno it's a very good salsa i'm not yeah. gonna lie i i actually um it, it's since uh we lost formosa yeah really sad which you know that once again regional podcast uh (laughs) since we lost formosa it's really the only food place that i like really enjoy anymore yeah um mainly because i've been getting sick from my other favorite food place so oh man yeah where's that where's that do you dare sully their name I don't want to sully their name, but it was a Japanese place. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I like I like them still. It's just I get kind of sick every so often. Yeah. So. But, you know, <laughs> that's my life. I've, mm-hmm. I've come to accept that I just get yeah. sick. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Once you reach a certain age, it's just like, oh, yeah, this makes me sick now. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, for me it's it's like we had meatloaf the other day at work, <coughs> and like I love meatloaf, but I was like, there's a decision I have to make here, because I love meatloaf, but I also know as like, give me 15 minutes and I'll just be in and out of that men's room all day. Oh. I think I made the right decision. It was delicious meatloaf. Yeah, no, which is why I'm still not convinced that you're not the monster. But anyway. <laughs> I still the monster has not resurfaced. He's just they're just buying their time. He I'm assuming is yeah. yeah. Um. Oh, here's a new thing I learned. Okay. The men's room at work, mm-hmm. in the ladies' room. Um, I don't know if there's like a shared vent where you can just hear stuff really well, but someone was having a rough time in the ladies' room the other day, and it was oh. very clear. You never want to hear someone going through a rough time. No. Uh, just as a rule, it kind yeah. of sucks. Yeah. Like, like human empathy kicks in at a certain point. Yeah. So, that, that's that's probably the worst part of my job. Mm-hmm. Well, no, there's a lot of worst parts of my job. Um, but the <laughs> bathrooms, man, when you hear someone having a tough time, there's no yeah. there's no worse feeling in my life. Yeah. And when I'm in, I'm sitting in the bathroom and I just hear someone next to me like having the time of it, and I recognize their shoes. And I'm like, like, oh no! If I recognize their shoes, then it's like, well, I guess I'm staying in here until they leave. Yeah. Because <laughs> I can't let them know that I know what's happening to them. 
I, I had a web page open. Someone did a custom animated Omega Supreme, and it's a really cool Omega Supreme. It's really, really oh, nice. dope. Although they could have done better. They could have thinned their paints a little more, but that's just me. Yeah. Um, what was I going to say? Oh, so I've been playing a Boros deck recently, yeah. like a red, red, white, yeah. based on Feather. So <laughs> the deck doesn't always pop, but mm-hmm. yeah, every time that it pops, almost a hundred percent. Like I, I'd say, actually, let me let me walk that back. Almost every time that it pops, maybe like seventy percent of the time. People just quit instantly. Yeah. Damn. Okay. Because basically what happens is it has a, the effect is if it targets a card, uh huh. if it tar- if you play a spell that targets one of your cards, it comes back at the end of the turn. Yeah. And you can just cycle cards infinitely. So okay. I have a, I have a deck that's literally just a bunch of like one drop cantrip type things, you know, yeah. like, uh, like it'll draw, it'll do indestructible, it'll deal mm-hmm. damage, those types of things. Um, that get respawned by Feather. So okay. once Feather hits the field, yeah, and I have mana open, I mm-hmm. can just literally just wipe their board. Okay. So <laughs> it's real fun <laughs> when somebody realizes what's going on and they're just like, bye. Bye. Yeah. <laughs> Although it's super inconsistent and it doesn't win every run. In fact, I'd say it's probably only like because I don't have all the cards I need yet. Yeah. It's probably only about twenty five percent win rate, something like that. Yeah. Yeah. But it's fun when it hits. Dope. Oh man. <laughs> but I'm very excited for M twenty. Yeah. Yeah. The uh, when's that coming out? Uh, soon, like two, three weeks, I want to say. Yeah. Magic. Or 2020. Um, it's 280 cards, July 12th. Okay. Yeah, I already have my I already have my pre-order for the the 40 the 50 packs for 50. Yeah. Cause I'm a monster. You're a demon. You're yeah, a demon. <laughs> like it I, doesn't. <sighs> I'm so excited because the um. I'm so excited because they're bringing wolves back, Brandon. Are you? Brandon, they're bringing wolves back. You sent me those screenshots. Yes. I'm very excited for wolves to be back. Yeah. Wolves to be back. Yeah. I, I'm i not going to lie. The Of all the things that I got rid of when I sold a bunch of my stuff, Yeah. the thing I most regret is getting rid of my wolf deck. <laughs> La loop. La loop. <laughs> yeah. That, that deck was very fun. Yeah. Um. Ah, oh, jeez, that was a that was a wild time of my life, Magic. Yeah. <laughs> Anywho. Um, Anywhoozle. <laughs> I think we I think we've we've padded for time enough. Yeah. Let's uh, let's get into this week's episode, Brandon. Okay. Um, all that okay. stuff about all that stuff about us being, you know. St- Looking for truth and yada yada yada. <laughs> uh, um, I'm John. I'm Brandon. And I think that's everything. This is yeah, that, that covers it. Yeah, I got. I think. I think we're good. I think we. I think we're solid. Um. So, the first sighting of this creature was 1955, as okay. was the last sighting. The first and only, or there were multiple sightings that occurred, but first only and only. 19. Okay. First and only. Its taxonomy is goblinoid. And its region oh. is Kentucky. Are these the Kentucky goblins? They're the um, I only know them as the Kentucky. It's like the, there's it's there's a, a family and there's like a, they say goblins outside. I'll give you like seventy five percent credit on that because you were okay. close. You were very close. They were this is, very drunk. They probably were. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. So. <laughs> God damn it, Brandon. <laughs> so this is the Kelly Hopkinsville's goblins. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Uh uh I chose this mm-hmm. because this is episode forty two, Brandon. You know what that means? By it's law an I had, Yeah, I had to make a reference to uh the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy in some way. Okay. Yeah. Uh um, no, that's so true. we're we're doing that's an alien true. episode mm-hmm. as a result. Because 
that's just that's just the rules. I didn't make them. But you have to obey them. I have to obey by. You got I, to. At some point, Journey of the Sorcerer, Journey mm-hmm. of the Sorcerer has to play as well by the Eagles. Yeah. Um, and uh, uh, you know maybe Zoe Deschanel will show up this episode. Who knows? Mm-hmm. I sent an email out. Yeah. Want to get an interview with the most recent Trillion? We'll see. Mm-hmm. Probably nothing's gonna happen. I, I I got just I got a, a form response from uh, Martin Freeman, but that's okay. A other. <laughs> <laughs> um, so because this is a story that takes place in like a very specific place, that's yeah, you know, it's it's Kentucky, right? It's Kentucky. It's Kentucky. So I want to start out by doing some research into Kelly, Kentucky. Okay. Which is where the actual event took place. Uh huh. Kelly's a place. <laughs> is it? Is it? Mm-hmm. So the Wikipedia article for this unincorporated town in Christian County, Kentucky, yeah. is a skinny paragraph long. <laughs> oh, okay. Like, my paragraph explaining the fact that it's a short article is somehow longer than yeah. the paragraph of About the, the whole article. thing? Oh, yeah. man. Um, almost in, the entirety of it is relating to the subject of this episode. Okay. And the festival surrounding it. Yeah. Also, they mentioned the eclipse. Uh-huh. That's it. Okay. That's all Kelly has on it. It doesn't have a... Because it's unincorporated, it doesn't have a founding date. Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah. Uh, it doesn't have... It doesn't have any information about uh, population densities. It doesn't have any information about what the people there do. Yeah. It, it's basically... If you go to Denning, like the town of Denning... Yeah. In our area, and then just go a little bit outside of that. It's based yeah. on that. It's uh-huh. based on that. It, it, it's, but that being said, Hopkinsville, which is a nearby uh-huh. small town city type of thing, mm-hmm. um, it has a bit more information. Okay. Um, the current population is around uh, thirty-one thousand, and at the okay. time of the encounter in 1955, it was twelve thousand. Yeah. Close to thirteen. Um, okay. I will say this. The city has a habit of being on the wrong side of history. Oh, uh, okay. Wait, in Kentucky? In Kentucky. Also, uh, before we continue, yeah. I did put it in the broadcasting folder. Ah, uh, dope. Okay. Yeah. Um. So, yeah, it, the, the city does does have a very... I like that illustration. Yep. Yeah, that's a thing. That's a thing. That's definitely uh, a thing. That's like Dobby on Dobby did meth. Dobby on meth. Yes. Yeah. That's probably about the well. <laughs> that's probably the most accurate description of them ever. So <laughs> it's Dobby on and meth, but he painted his skin silver. Yeah. Um, and got naked. You ain't got naked. Yeah. So, like I said, this city has been on the wrong side of history. Yeah. Um, especially in the 1800s. Uh-huh. It sided with the Confederacy and was one of the Trail of Tears sites. Okay. Yeah, to the point that they have a, a, a memorial service there about it. Oh. From, like, like the Native Americans do. Yeah. Like, like the local tribes. Oh, man. Um. So, yeah, not great. Not, not great. great. Not, not great. Uh, today, it appears to be an agribusiness center. Uh, in a Walmart distribution center because uh, Walmart's the number one employer. Oh, uh, in the whole like in all of Kelly Hopkinsville, uh, in in Hopkinsville it is the number one employer. Oh damn! Okay. Yeah, I, I looked up their the numbers and it's like uh, distribution center has the most employs yeah. the most people. So but, okay. I mean I'm sure all the agribusiness probably out, outweighs Walmart. Yeah. But the fact of the matter is Walmart does win. Uh-huh. So, um, so hey, Kelly and Hopkinsville, if you need a hastily made tourism video, <laughs> I know someone who can handle that for you. Yeah, yeah, I think it's me <laughs> because I just spent uh, two paragraphs basically shitting on them. <laughs> Fun times in Cleveland today. Cleveland. Oh man. Oh shit! Oh shit! I was, you know what? I was scrolling around looking at the map. Yeah. Oh wait. 
Are you watching how to hate I'm watching the Cleveland. Yeah. Literally all I could think of while I was writing this section. Who did that? Uh, Bishop Vids. Bishop Vids. Give me fourteen million dollars in about eight months ago to make a promotional video to bring people. Oh man, that would take me to Cleveland though. That would. I mean, would it? Yeah. I'm not He's hard to convince. Who... That's fair. Um, I, I'm gonna include that in the show notes, by the way. Okay. The, uh, the hastily should. made tourism video for Cleveland. You should. It's a very funny video. Uh, I recommend it highly, and it was all I could think of when I was writing that, because there was, like, nothing nice to say about either Kelly or Hopkinsville. <laughs> and usually usually you could say, like, something nice about a place. Like, yeah. for example, Kingston was the original capital yeah. of New York State. There we go. We got something nice to say about it. Yeah. Nothing else. Nothing else needs to be said. Uh, we don't have to talk about all the other things that happen in Kingston. We can talk about that. Yeah. <laughs> Kelly Hopkinsville, I couldn't find anything nice to talk about. No. So man. that gives you an idea of where we're coming from. Uh-huh. Um So let's uh let's get into it then. Um so for this event, I'm going to be structuring the story on the nineteen seventy eight report by Isabel Davis. Okay. Close encounter at Kelly. Um this source and and by that I mean Isabel Davis is a Center for UFO Studies investigator. Okay. Uh, which is KUFOS for short. KUFOS? KUFOS. Um, and while it's the most detailed report of the subject... KUFOS. KUFOS. I really think it should be taken with a grain of salt, uh, considering that most of the details of the event were taken more than a year later. Yeah. Um, only one interview subject was actually at the, the scene of, like, the event. Uh-huh. Um, and, uh, they're generally coming from the point of assuming that it's aliens. Yeah. And then finding evidence to fill it. Mm. So that's, that, that's really, I want to put that up front and be very, very clear on that. Yeah. Um, I'll additionally be referencing a much shorter article by Joe Nickel, um, for okay. the 2006 Skeptical Inquirer article, yeah. Siege of Little Green Men, the 1955 Kelly, Kentucky Incident. Yeah, for Joe a, Nichols a good name. Oh yeah, oh yeah. he's the one who did the. Uh, he's the one who I used for. Um, what was it? The Flatwoods Monster. Okay. His article. His article yeah. was my primary source for that episode. Um, he he knows his shit. Yeah. He's a he's actually a former private investigator as well, so oh, he okay. knows how to like go around and interview people and all that yeah. kind of stuff. So. Yeah. Dope, bro. No, he he's. <laughs> I just like his work. He does a lot of stuff. Well, there's just other podcasts and shit they listen to where where he's involved with it. Oh, okay. Yeah. No, he's he's he writes pretty good articles. Um, yeah. It took me a little while to get my. So I have a subscription to Center for Skeptical Inquiry, um, as well because I know you do because yeah. you have the actual magazine articles. Yeah, yeah, yeah I get the magazines. I, I I get the the digital copies because that's just my preference. Yeah. So um, I had some problems with my my account with that and um the 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 help desk team was actually pretty helpful so oh dope. kudos okay. on you guys uh so let's get let's dive right into it then. yeah let's dig deep this is gonna be a fun get story <laughs> all right so late one sunday night 1955 just after sunset the sutton family was spending the night at their farmhouse in rural kentucky kelly kentucky to be specific on the night in question, 11 people were in the small, two-room farmhouse, eight adults, and three children. That's a lot of people. That's a lot of people <laughs> for just, like, a little two-room place. Yeah. 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 It was a. It, it, there's actually a picture of the shack that comes up later, and yeah. it's a very small shack. Okay. I've definitely been into shacks this size, um, just in this area. Mm -hmm. So let's go through the, the players of this story. There's Glennie Lakeford, age 50, matriarch, and the primary source of the story. Uh-huh. Elmer Lucky Sutton, age 25, son of Glennie. Vera Sutton, age 29, Lucky's wife. John Charlie Sutton, 
age 21, son of Glenny. I want to point out he has two first names. Yeah. Uh, so you know. JC? I, Brandon. Brandon. Call him JC. You and I both know what kind of what kind of family this is. Oh, yeah. Uh, Aileen Sutton, wife of John, age 27. Billy Ray Taylor. Uh, no, that's not a Sutton. That's that's just Lucky's friend, age 21. June Taylor, age 18, wife of Billy. And then there's three children, Lonnie, 12, Charlton. Charlton. I, I just That's the first time I've ever read that yeah. out loud, uh, age 10. Mary, age 7. Uh, and they're all Mrs. Larkford's children. Lankford's children. Lankford? Lankford. Lankford's a name. I just realized I typed it differently twice. Okay. I'm assuming Lankford's probably the right one because I think I, I just copied and pasted there. Yeah. Um. So there's a few important details I want to touch on before we continue, mainly okay. involving the individuals involved in this. Uh, Elmer, Vera, Billy, and June were not permanent residents of the farmhouse and were carnival workers. Okay. Elmer, Nothing wrong with a carny. There's nothing wrong with a carny. That being said, Elmer had the letters Lucky tattooed on his left hand. Which Did he is have he an extra finger? Nickname. Uh, It's five. So he has, I, I'm assuming no one, one gets on it on the thumb. thumb. No one does it on the thumb. There's like love and hate and all that. You just do it on the front yeah. fingers. Well, I'm assuming because they said left hand yeah. that he did do that. Okay. Meaning his hand, his fist probably said Ucky. Yeah. <laughs> which might, which for all I know, might have actually been a very good indicator for the the cleanliness of that hand at oh, any given yeah. moment. So, additionally, it was reported that of the 11 people, um, there were only 10 witnesses that night because June apparently was so afraid that she couldn't look. And okay. I'm going I'm going to say this, the three children probably don't count either. Okay. <laughs> but that's that's mainly because uh, I think in a later interview uh, the oldest Lonnie said that his mom just basically put them under the bed or whatever. Yeah. So, who knows. So, let's get to uh, August 21st, 1955 now that we know the players. Yeah, let's do it. Uh, so at 7 p.m., Billy Ray Taylor, another person with, with two first Multiple names. Multiple names, yeah. Yeah. Uh, he returns to the farmhouse from getting a drink in the well in the backyard. He had seen a flying saucer. Um, the saucer was silver and left a rainbow-covered exhaust across the night sky. Nice. Yeah. This, that sounds pretty beautiful to see. Yeah. Um, it also sounds like that there's a very particular type of meteorite meteor yeah. that that like has a very slow trajectory that I know exists. Yeah. Uh, I tried to look it up. I literally saw it on Reddit like a week ago at the time <laughs> of recording, but I couldn't find it. So uh, <laughs> it, it sounds a lot like a meteor that type that exists. Um, so Billy claimed that it hovered uh, silently 30 or 40 feet overhead to the Southwest. Okay. The craft then landed in a gully at the edge of the field out of sight with a, like a vertical takeoff landing type situation. Yeah. Um, anecdotal evidence, while being an oxymoron, <laughs> uh, is really all this case has to go on. Yeah. So I do think that it's important to look at the credibility of the witnesses. Mm -hmm. uh, and in this case, Billy's not the most... Uh, no, no, I, I, Billy has a way about him. Yeah. And Isabel Davis herself has like a whole paragraph on the problems with Billy <laughs> as an individual, or rather the problems that people feel about Billy. I, I yeah. don't know if she's convinced, but that's a whole other thing. Mm -hmm. So, um, I'm just going to quote directly from the report. He had looked at the creatures with extravagant success. He was the only member of the group who appeared to arouse immediate doubt in everyone who talked to him. Mm -hmm. Even among the family, he had a low standing. <laughs> when he first came to the house and reported a spaceship, they paid him no attention. Yeah. Later, during the investigation, he basked in the limelight of publicity. He, <laughs> he elaborated and embroidered his description of the creatures, though not his descriptions of the spaceship. 
and eventually produced the most imag- imaginative and least credible of the Little Men sketches. <laughs> So, th- like, I'm still not even done, and she's roasting this dude. Yeah. Like, and she believes this story. Oh, so, yeah. <laughs> several skeptics who labeled this story a hoax referred uh-huh. to him as the probable originator. His behavior was in sharp contrast to those of the other witnesses, none of whom aroused such prompt suspicion in the investigators. So, the person who's, like, the originator of this story, the yeah. first event, the first thing that happens... He's a questionable individual. (laughs) And let's make the matter even more questionable. The day the Earth stood still, you know, the one that's famous for the the silver flying saucer that people step out of and all that stuff, that came out in 1951. (laughs) Uh, And it's already in the cultural zeitgeist, so... I would assume that this dude probably was aware of it, especially considering the fact he was a carny worker. Yeah. Right. So he's probably more like in terms of entertainment, he's probably more in the know. Mm -hmm. No, that makes sense. Yeah. So even the Suttons themselves suggested that it might've been a shooting star um, before they like went with the whole spaceship thing. So it's like, there's a lot of stuff here. So if he's, if he's telling the truth, it's probably a shooting star. If he's not telling the truth, well, there's clear things that could be pointed yeah. to. Shooting stars are usually are they're not colorful really. There's like a little like a well, swoop. Yeah, usually, but this might have been like a meteor. Okay. Right, like it might have been a, a meteorite streaking through the sky, like yeah. at a low altitude. Because, like I said, there is a type of meteor shower that does look like that. Gotcha. Right? Yeah. So well, that's true. Yeah. Yeah. Huh. I'm I mean, I th- thinking that he's maybe less, <laughs> I, 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 maybe not telling the truth. I, I think he's maybe he's less sus- than truthful. He, he's suspect. I think he's yeah. more on the less than truthful. But there is some evidence of a meteor shower happening that night. So we'll, we'll get into that though. Okay. So, um, so 8 p.m. So for an hour, nothing happens. Mm-hmm. 8 p.m. Dog begins to bark. Right. Yeah. So Lucky and Billy, uh, investigating the barking, go outside. When they open the door, the dog supposedly runs out the door and hides yeah. underneath the house. <laughs> and Lucky in like the the interview like roasts the dog about man that's a that's a really useless dog uh-huh. type thing. Um, when they leave the house, they have a shotgun and a twenty two caliber rifle respectively. So Lucky has the shotgun, Billy yeah. the twenty two caliber. So, pretty much, this this is standard fare for for rednecks <laughs> to have a shotgun and a just and to a, have them, just to have them. Yeah, like it's a thing. It's yeah. just a thing that happens. So, <laughs> a strange glow appeared to approach the farmhouse. Yeah, um, which they eventually were able to see as the shape and size of a small man. Okay, the man. Stood at three and a half feet tall, and Brandon has posted a link. No, it just popped into my head as soon as you started reading that paragraph, and I couldn't not. Oh, okay. Got it, got it. <laughs> I should have guessed. It's it's yeah. For those of you not not looking, it's a uh, Gogol Bordello song, um, which I should have guessed would be yep. the thing you posted. It's explicitly uh, called Dogs Were Barking. <laughs> that's fair. Barking. It's on brand, Brandon, I gotta say. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's on brand. No, it is. Uh, okay. So, let me get back to the description. The man stood at three and a half feet tall, had an oversized round head, and long <laughs> arms ending in talons. Uh, the eyes were large, glowed yellow, and were offset evenly. So, meaning they weren't on the side. They weren't dead center. They were kind of like at 45 yeah. degree angles out of the head. Um, uh-huh. The skin was silver and glowed like a radium watch. <laughs> I don't even know what that is. It yeah. Like, I, oh, I, oh, oh, radium. Sorry. I, I I was listening, not reading. I I thought you said Arabian watch, not radium oh, no, watch. Radium. I know what radium is. That's the um, glow in the dark hands. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. It's basically like a, like a silverish green yeah. would be the best way to describe it. Uh huh. Um. So, here's where it gets. So I do have a picture of the alien. Uh huh. 
Uh, and it is again Meth Dobby. Meth Dobby is definitely the best description for this. Like, but one the middle one is jacked Meth Dobby. The yes, on the left, that, yeah, right. The, yeah, the one on the left is Dobby. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the one in the middle is if Dobby hit the gym, uh-huh. and the one on the right is if Dobby had a man bod, a, a dad bod. That's if Dobby like died in a river and bloated <laughs> like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's bloated Dobby. Uh, it's 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 Jack Dobby after dying in a river. <laughs> so it, it's like, oh no, you know what? It's it's the stages of Dobby, right? So he yeah. starts out on the oh, left. Yeah. He gets jacked, ends up in a river. Uh huh. <laughs> Don't know how it happened. Probably made probably made some bad contacts getting the steroids. Yeah. And then he couldn't pay because what does he have? Socks. <laughs> Spoiler alert for Harry Potter. <laughs> Ma- I can't even do that impression. Like, Magic gave Dobby a sock. It's been so long since I heard that movie. <laughs> I, I I I haven't watched it in a while. So yeah, no, it's been a minute. It's. <laughs> I, I think the last time I watched a Harry Potter movie was when we went to see the last one together. Yeah. I think we saw part two together. Yep. That's literally the last time I saw a Harry Potter movie. So I watched them on, um, they do them on Thanksgiving, not Netflix. They? Not Netflix. So I, I see them from time. Actually does, um, uh, fantastic beasts count as a Harry Potter movie. Cause they watched fantastic beasts one. I guess I that make, counts. I actually liked fantastic beasts one. Oh really? I haven't seen yeah. it yet. Okay. I haven't seen number two yet. No, the crimes of uh, Grimble, blah, 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 blah. yeah, of Grimble, of Gr- Gr- Grimble, sh- sh- scrim- Gr- Scrimble door, Scrimble bar, but dip, yeah, 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 yeah. I haven't seen that one yet. I think there's a Thunderbird in it, so it'd probably make me angry. There's a lot in it. Yeah, there's probably a lot of stuff that would make me angry in it. I'm not gonna lie. Probably. <laughs> so, Brandon, yeah. Now, if you thought that this story was wild. Yeah. It's about to get weirder, <laughs> but like not in like the high strangest weirder, but like in uh-huh. the what am I reading weirder? <laughs> so, as the creature approached, it had its hands held up, as if it was signaling it meant no harm. Okay. They literally in the in the, the book they said that it had its hands held up as though it was getting robbed. Oh man! <laughs> like, don't shoot. Yeah. Don't you, don't you. So, Brandon, I yeah. want you to take a guess as to where this story goes. Oh, I bet he shoots, doesn't he? he oh, he def- they both definitely <laughs> shoot. And they wait. On, so, true to human nature, and especially stereotypical carny nature, uh, both men shoot the creature almost immediately. Oh, damn. Okay. <laughs> they wait until it was 20 feet from the back door, and yeah. then shoot. <laughs> when they shoot, the creature... Did a flip. <laughs> Wait, did it dodge it? Or did they hit it and it went plot like in an old western where he gets nailed and just falls backwards? I don't know. Did it make a small ding when they hit him? <laughs> so I, I think it falls over and then when it gets up, it does a flip. Yeah. And then runs away. <laughs> And all I can think of is literally what you were saying, like an old Western type thing or like like a, a G-rated uh, shooter, right? Where you, you have yeah. like people coming and you shoot them and they flip over and then run away. Yeah. Um, I'm sorry. I'm just imagining this. And I've been imagining this since I wrote this. And it, it's, <laughs> it's so insanely ridiculous. Yeah. <sighs> At this point, the shootout begins. Oh, okay. Wait, shoot. So is it, do they begin returning fire? No. No. They just shoot at them the whole night. <laughs> the, the two carnies are shooting the whole night. Yeah. Uh, it lasts for three hours, Brad. Oh, no. <laughs> That's too long. It's a lot of ammo. Yeah. Uh, so... Uh, the event though <laughs> is extremely dull. Yeah. Because literally every single time one of these things shows up, it has its hands up and it's approaching the house, and they <laughs> shoot it every yeah. single time. So I'm not going to explain every instance of them shooting 
something that literally looks like it's like, oh, we come in peace, man. Like, yeah. chill for one second. Um, but <laughs> let me just tell you what happens. Men shoot, approach creatures, uh, fail to get hit or get hit and not aren't harmed. They yeah. fall over. They do a flip. They run away. Right? Uh-huh. So either these men are terrible shots or they're impervious to bullets. Yeah. Um, if it's real, I'm going to say they're 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 terrible shots. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but that's just me. There is a standout moment during the encounter, though. Okay. Um, when investigating one of the creatures shot, Billy was attacked by one from the roof. This is mm-hmm. around 10 p.m. Uh, the creature was able to reach for his hair before Billy was pulled back in by Eileen Sutton, Lucky's wife. Well, no, that's not Lucky, Lucky Lucky's wife. That's uh, JC's wife, I believe. Gotcha. Let me, let me go back to my let me go back to my uh, my family tree over here. Uh, <laughs> it's a good thing yeah, you included that. That's John. That John. That's John Charlie's wife. No, yeah. it is because there's a lot of names. Um, mm-hmm. So, luckily, oh, Lucky. Luck, I, I read luck, Lucky as Luckily because that's yeah. It's not a normal name for a human. It's a name uh-huh. for a kobold. Um, so Lucky pushes past his friend, shoots the creature on the roof, only to see another in the tree. Yeah. <laughs> the men open fire on the treebound creature, which then proceeds to float to the ground. <laughs> Wait, it floats to the ground? It floats to the ground, Brandon. Why? Why? I don't know, but it okay. did. Uh, it should also be noted that the locomotion of these creatures is not real. Because what do you mean the locomotion is not real? When they run, they don't have a knee bend. They're like basically with two like knee braces on or something. They're like Cotton from uh, from King of the Hill. Yeah. He lost his shins to the uh, the Viet Cong. Uh huh. Or was it the cr- wait? He killed fifty men. I forget what war he was in, but he did kill Fitty Men. Yeah. Um. So, they don't have a knee bend, and were supposedly capable of floating. Yeah. Right. Like. Okay. Like, like, kind of similar. Like, I'm imagining the. Um, you remember in Majora's Mask, the Lon Lon Ranch thing. Yes. Yeah, or, or Crimea Man- Ranch. I forget. They, they changed the name in that one. But yeah. that's what I'm imagining, like the, the Flatwoods-type monsters floating. Okay. Um, additionally, they never made any noise. Like, no screeching, no mouth movements, no nothing. Not even when the, they got shot and did a flip. No. The only okay. noise they ever made was tapping on the roof. From when they were, like, running on the roof. Uh, and I should note one more time, the creatures were never hostile. Even yeah. once. The the, the 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 more you read, the less... It didn't seem credible, really, to begin with. But it starts just going... It's just nasty. It's, just, it's gone nasty now. I yeah, don't know what's like, going on with it. Like, it, it's... There's... There's nothing here. It's not real. There's no way this is real. Yeah. I hate – I usually like to go through the whole thing and be like, this is not real or whatever. You know, mm-hmm. here's why. Here's why. This is just – nothing about this is real. <laughs> now, it might be alien, but that's that's not the default state you can take. You need to have proof that it's alien. Yeah. Um. But I want to note one thing. What's that? Only Lucky and Billy saw any of these until 10 p.m. or 10.30. Okay. According to the account, basically Miss Langford is like, yeah, yeah not, no one saw anything. No one took them seriously until like 10, 10.30. Uh-huh. Um, and not only that, but the presence of gunfire, whether or not they, they were shooting, which by all accounts they would be shooting a lot, Yeah. Uh, is disputed by neighbors and investigators. Some people say they heard nothing. Other people say they heard a war. Oh, okay. Which, at which, which to me, I don't fully believe. But then again, this is rural Kentucky, so maybe yeah. they might not give a shit mm-hmm. about gunfire. Because they're, but then like, because you know, think about think about where we lived. If you heard a gunshot, were you really ever surprised? No. Yeah. Yeah. It never concerned you. It's like, okay. 
<laughs> someone's probably hunting a deer. Yeah. So they that 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 that's not really a line of reasoning to follow. Um, yeah. Suffice to say, I have some holes in doubts. Like I have some, I see holes in the story, and I have some doubts about the. Uh, Do you legitimacy? No, just a few. Just a few. Okay. Um. So. <laughs> Brandon. Yeah. At 11 p.m. they escape. <laughs> wait, wait. The people or the creatures? The people. The, oh, so they fled. Yeah. I want to point out there was only two creatures ever seen simultaneously ever, and that was the yeah. tree incident. <laughs> there were some reports that said it was like 14, but only two people, only two creatures ever showed up in their yeah. view. Like definitively, there were only two. Uh huh. Um, based on their own accounts. Mm -hmm. So the Suttons pile into two cars and make their way to the nearby Hopkinsville police station. Okay. According to Isabel's report, um, the police report that the Suttons were genuinely afraid, with Billy having a heart rate of over okay. 140 beats per minute. Yeah. Shit. Um, I mean, okay, that's interesting, but who, yeah. there's a million and one things that could trigger a heart, high heart rate. Yeah. Um, so I don't really use that as evidence one way or the other. Yeah, like any number of drugs that will make you shoot at non-existent goblins for three hours. Meth. Well, there's a ton of them that'll do that for you. Meth especially. Oh, yeah. Um, but regardless, the arrival of the Suttons would trigger investigators visiting the farmhouse from the local and state police. Supposedly, the plot thickens at this point as meteors had been spotted earlier in the night heading in the direction of Sutton Farm by one of the state troopers who visited the farm that night. Okay. The officer, who is unnamed... Unnamed, okay. Unnamed, both claim these meteors to be not meteors and to be meteors. So, this testimony is probably fake. <laughs> um, in addition to the local and state police, four military police, two newspaper reporters, and a handful of the general public... Uh, yeah basically flooded the farm mm -hmm. investigation of the farmhouse yielded no evidence of drinking however there are two noteworthy unphotographed things found outside okay a luminous patch of about 1.5 feet in uh diameter was found uh -huh. in the grass where one of the gerblins was supposedly knocked over a gerblin a gerblin all right uh the patch itself was only visible from one angle and no samples were made okay so it definitely happened. Uh, the second, and perhaps more incriminating, uh, yeah. was a piece of aluminum foil on the fence. Okay. So my instant thought is maybe the aluminum foil was made to sell the the, fe the hoax. Uh huh. He's a carny. Maybe he knew a few uh, few short people. Who knows? Maybe he knew yeah. the human cannibal. Right? Maybe. Right. Uh, but then again, it might have also just been something getting loose from the trash. Eh, true. Oh. So, eh. regardless, the assembled investigators left empty-handed. However, the story's not done yet. From 2.30 a.m. to daybreak... Okay, so wait, what? Continue. <laughs> I'm excited. 2.30 a.m. From 2.30 a.m., because the investigators had left at this point, to daybreak, yeah. the creatures continued to slowly approach the house, hands raised, non-threatening. Okay. Lucky... Continued to use the creatures for target practice, despite his mom's protests. <laughs> That's good. Uh, after August 22nd, the Hopkinsville goblins were never seen again. This is likely either because of their warm welcome or non-existence. Yeah, I mean, Occam's Razor's got to help us a little bit here. Occam's Razor, Occam's Razor cuts super deep on this one. Yeah. Like, it's pretty clear what happened here. Um, so, the investigation of the story is flawed, to say the least. There no, was no, you don't say. Yeah, no physical evidence was gathered whatsoever. Uh, -huh. uh the witnesses. Um, wow, I totally screwed up. This were hardly the most reliable, not highly. Uh, yeah. Um, so, and not only that, but, uh, 
Isabel spends 32 pages of her report attempting to debunk the the theories of skeptics. That's a lot. 32 pages. The report yeah. itself, Brandon, is about 90. Holy shit. Okay. So she spends a lot of a effort. Th- about a third of her report trying to debunk it. I read it. It wasn't really convincing, her debunking, and also yeah. is not how this works at all. Uh-huh. It, it's the opposite way. Um, so it was pretty great, though, because she collected all of my, my problems into one place. Okay. So I'm, I just have nice. a bullet, bulleted list here of all the evidence that I have problems with. So I'm just going to yeah. read through this, and we'll, we'll stop and talk about a few of them. So first and foremost, my biggest problem, lack of physical evidence, right? No footprints, yeah. no root marks, no blood. So ground apparently was hard, but there still might be some evidence somewhere because I can't. I can only imagine that there's probably some bit of yeah. mud somewhere in that area because it is a field that was used to grow tobacco. So yeah, it it, it sh- even if it's August, you're growing. You're in the middle of your growing season. Yeah, right. So you got to irrigate it somehow. Whatever. Um, no roof marks. She claims that the creatures were uh, virtu- virtually weightless. And all I could say to that is, how do you know they were virtually weightless? Yeah. <laughs> I don't think there's a way they could know that. No. Without having the creature, you couldn't know. Yeah. Uh, there was also the fact that there was no blood. Uh, she did claim that the glowing spot was blood, but there's like a thousand and one things that glow at night. And especially yeah. if it's only glowing from one angle, that could just be like a form of fungus that's on the grass at that angle. Yeah. Well, that could be, I don't know, that could be several things. Yeah. yeah. Like it could be a fairy circle. Mm-hmm. And I, I say that not being like the fictional one. I mean that in yeah. the... Fungus grows in circles. Yeah. So, uh, the next step, the next bit of evidence that was problematic was there were no goblins seen by the investigators. Yeah, pretty problematic considering the fact that for three hours straight and then another three hours straight, they just kept approaching the house. Yeah. Little questionable. No spaceship was found and no landing zone was found. Yeah, it's important to prove that something was there. Mm-hmm. There was another UFO case that has way more evidence of this about like a UFO landing. Like there's a lot of UFO landings that have way more evidence than this one. Yeah. Oh, and there's I say a that, lot. Yeah. I say that evidence. Um, only a handful of shotgun shells were found. It, it was a three hour shootout. Yeah. Uh, the screen doesn't match the story. So this is this is referencing the living room screen, like yeah. the like the bug screen. Um, she spent six pages talking about the, the holes that are in this screen. Mm-hmm. Personally, from my perspective, that is like the least of my worries in terms of yeah. the story. But she spends uh, a fifth of her rebuttal on this. On just the screen? On just the screen. Shoot. <laughs> Literally. Uh-huh. Uh, the reputation of the family, which I've already talked about, that's is problematic. Reputation matters in anecdotal evidence. And even then, it's still not proof of anything. Yeah. Uh, the family did eventually charge admission to the farmhouse. Okay. The stories of the family changed. And why was it in the middle of nowhere, Kelly, Kentucky, that aliens decided to raid a house? Yeah, well, I don't know. That one is hard because it's... You could sort of say that about anywhere. Like, why, why not? You... you if something like that were to happen, you would yeah. know the that's that's the, the most flimsy it. that's the most flimsy one for me too. Yeah. So let's go into theories, Brandon. Okay. So these will be good. The most generous theory is the misidentification yeah. theory. Um, this is a popular one, and it was championed by Joe Nickel in his 2006 Skeptical Inquirer which was one of the sources. Oh, damn, he froze. Uh, okay. And it's basically that it was just simple talking to take up airtime until the our hi- connection. There we go. <coughs> oh, yep. So, <coughs> where did, uh, where did I leave off? Good. Like, right when he started reading. It's all good. <coughs> okay, so, I'll just start over. Oh, man, my cough is coming. I'm out of water. Um, oh, man. It's good. We're almost done. Okay. <laughs> So one popular explanation for the events, which was championed by Joe Nickel in his 2006 Skeptical Inquirer article, 
uh, is that it was simple men- misidentification. This is definitely the most generous thing yeah. for them. Uh, the hypothesis po- posits that the Hopkinsville Goblin incident resembles the Flatwoods Monster case. Yeah. And it really, really does. Because <coughs> think about, I don't know if you, it's been a while since we did it. It was episode 18, and we're on episode yeah. 42 for. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <coughs> Which is a long time. Um, basically, what happened in that case was a meteorite was plotted, it crash landed. They go go to the site and then they're attacked by an alien and nothing else happens, right? Mm-hmm. And in that case, it was horn great horn owls or barn owls, right? Yeah, was was the the explanation. Mm-hmm. In this case, this whole story, assuming that everything happened the way that they said it happened and the, the stuff happened that they said happened, yeah, you could literally explain this by a meteor and two uh, great horn owls that are angry. Yeah. Like literally everything, yeah. everything is explainable. They're about three feet tall. Mm-hmm. They have they have the ears. They have the eyes. They have the rounded head. If if you're looking at their eyes, they might have eye shine. If you're coming from a house, mm-hmm. like everything about it fits the bill. Yeah. And if you layer in the fact that they may or may not have been drunk, <laughs> or I would under say the influence, most likely may, most likely may have been. If you, I would if call you it layered, a probability. There's a high probability that they were under some influence. Yeah. Um, it really does become the simplest explanation. Yeah. And most likely one. <laughs> so, yeah, I, honestly, that's my personal favorite theory. Yeah. Um, the next popular theory was that it's a hoax. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, it's really not a major leap to see how this could be the case. Because Lucky and Billy are both kind of, they're they're carnies. They could be hucksters, you know, type thing. Yeah. Um, layer on top of that, the story is not too far off from the like in their time period perception of UFOs. Uh huh. And there's a money making venture that does get tied to this later on. Yeah. It's an appealing conclusion, and it's also the official theory listed in Project Blue Book, which is the government's research into alien sightings. For those of yeah. you who don't know. Um, which that's its own episode, maybe not of this podcast, because it, it, it's it's a lot of like government hoogly hoo and hog, hogwash and horn swoggle. Yeah. Um. So of course, there is one final theory. It was aliens. It, of course, it was. This is not. This is literally just a default solution that Isabel Davis took. That, that's, yeah, it's not. It's nothing. There's n- there's no evidence to actually prove point to this being the case. Like yeah. none of the stuff is a smoking gun, right? No, 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 none of it. None of it. it it's 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 a yeah. It's nothing. So there is a legacy that was left by this. Yeah. Despite literally only appearing one night over the course of six hours, uh, the event still lives on. In the inter- immediate years, the community mocked the sighting openly, like like the, the police were mocking yeah. the, the Suttons. Um, like they had like an, a little green men defense uniform yeah. or something like that. It was actually kind of funny, not going to lie. <laughs> um, recently, however, it's been adopted by the town of Ken... Ken- can you tell that I'm reaching the end and my brain is starting to shut down? A little bit. <laughs> uh, so recently, there's been a yearly Kelly Little Green Men Days Festival, which is basically uh-huh. like a local Comic Con that has aliens. Yeah. Um, which basically is just, you know, I said basically twice, which is, you know, a tourist draw. It's a tourist yeah. trap, right? Uh, it even coincided with the eclipse one year. Yeah. You know, the, the recent one in, like, what was it, 2017? Mm-hmm. Which, I looked at that, and I was like, that was yesterday. And then yeah. I read, and I'm like, oh, that was two years ago. <laughs> oh, no. Um, yeah. So, it's also been referenced in a lot of ways. First yeah. of all, Pokemon. Okay. Sableye is a Hopkinsville goblin. How do we know that? It it's been said. Oh, has it? Okay. Like like the designers based it off of yeah. based Sableye off of the Hopkinsville goblins. 
Like okay. if you look at its design, it's literally it's pretty similar. Yeah. Uh, there's a monster in Pathfinder, Beast Theory Five, I believe, called yeah. the Hopkins, which is basically yeah. just a Hopkinsville goblin. Mm-hmm. Uh, the movie Critters from 1986 okay. was supposedly a loose adaptation. Uh-huh. Uh huh. It came from Kentucky, which was a musical based on the events. Yeah. And and here's the biggest one: it's the origin of the phrase "Little Green Men." That is that's actually pretty cool, right? Yeah. So this story, it, it, this is one of those stories that I've known about. Yeah. And until I did the research, I thought that there was way more to it other than whatever. Yeah. There's nothing to it. <laughs> no, there, there's literally Cause, nothing cause to it. Brandon, when we were in high school, do you remember the time that we were at Falco's house? Yes. This is basically that time we were at Falco's house. It's like, I see things. Yeah. That's all I have to say. That's it. Yeah, no, that's that's, <laughs> that's literally all I have to say. Uh huh. So, um, before I close, though, uh, there was a sentence I had to read for this episode. Okay. And it was uh made by Isabel uh, Isabel Davis, mm-hmm. and it was her attempting to basically justify the credibility of one of her witnesses. Yeah. So here we go. <clears throat> Two items about Chief Greenwell were important in terms of the investigation. He himself had seen a UFO, and his mother was a full-blooded Shoshone Indian. The latter fact probably meant that he had some experience with the kind of prejudice that falls to a lot of minority groups. He could consider the Sutton story from a viewpoint that was not available to the other investigators. She literally just said... Because he was discriminated as a Shoshone Indian. Yeah, that didn't. No, no. Oh. <laughs> that's that's like the most. That's like casual racism. Yeah. Like without, I I don't even I don't think she even realized what she was. No. Writing. I don't know, at all. That's yeah. Like it's. I don't. It, it, there's something that's wrong about the way that. That she says that. The wording, there's something in the wording that made me say, wait, wait, wait. Yeah. What did I just read? Let me, right? Let me, yeah. Let me read that again. So, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know, man. UFO, UFO, uh, UFO, like, novellas and reports yeah. are the weirdest thing in the world to read. Oh, yeah. Like, especially if you're looking at them green texts. Mm-hmm. Uh, I just was on a heavy green text site the other day. <laughs> it's like this is a bit much. It's it's usually a bit much. Yeah. So, yeah, I think that's all I got. Okay. Uh, I mean, this was this was a story. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Fun fact, though, I have been planning on doing this since like episode one. Have you? Okay. Yeah, I've actually been working on this since episode one because I didn't feel like reading a 90, 90 page book. Like a 90 page book. Yeah, I get it. Yeah. I get it. So it, this has been one of those things each week it was like, is this the week I'm going to do the Hopkinsville Goblins? Yeah. Nah. <laughs> and then it reached episode 40, and I'm like, well, I might as well do an alien episode for 42. Yeah. So here's an alien episode. It's an alien episode. Yeah. So. I think it's time to close because the yawns are coming. Oh man, um, Brandon, I I swear it's literally yeah. every single time I open up it's the every the plugs, time. it's yeah. like it doesn't matter how long the episode is. It could be forty five minutes. It could be an hour and a half uh-huh. until I start to see the fact that our website is cryptopediacast dot com. Our Instagram yeah. <laughs> and, and Twitter are at cryptopediacast. Yeah. Our email is cryptopediacast at gmail dot com. Or us at CryptopediaCast.com. Uh, I'm fine alert there. And then yeah. the second that I see that we have a Facebook group and a Patreon, I start to yawn. <laughs> yeah. Um, if you enjoy the podcast, be sure to rate, review, and subscribe. Because that helps us, I think. Mm. Maybe. Yeah. I don't know. It's more or less <laughs> just a uh, – it, it more or less fluffs my ego a little bit. 
So uh -huh. I guess there's that. <laughs> uh, if you have any monster requests or stories, be sure to send them in. Like, I think what was the Bridgewater Triangle was like a three episode series made by, like, yeah. was it suggested by a listener? So we take them seriously. Uh -huh. Especially considering it, oh, like we said before, sources are much, much appreciated. Oh, yeah. No, very much so. But, <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I had such a week. Uh, I bet. <laughs> uh, you could find me on Instagram at donkey underscore hands. You could find me at my website, boyerb.com. My email is brandon at cryptopediacast.com. And my Twitter is at crypto brandon. My Instagram is at mu2057. My Twitter at JF Dunham. My website is johndunhamgames.com. And you can email me at john at cryptopediacast.com. Our art was done by Tom Hill. You could find him on Instagram at Thomas Michael Hill. His website is Greater Glory Co. Great Oh, I'm bad at words. GreaterGloryCo.com. And you his email it. is Tom Mike Hill at gmail.com. As always, I'm John. I'm Brandon. And things are going to get weird. Weird. <laughs>